Hello. In the autumn of last year, I purchased some bare root strawberry plants. That turned out to be quite eventful, quite eventful. Uh, and I knocked up a couple of videos on that, um, which I'm going to dovetail to shortly. But we're now in the spring of this year. So those strawberry plants have overwintered in a greenhouse and they're now standing outdoors. But I'm going to bring them indoors now, at least some of them, and show you what progress those strawberry plants have made. Just let me move these to one side and then we'll go and get the strawberry plants. Hello. Earlier this week I managed to get the last of my tomato plants out of the greenhouse. The tomatoes were growing in these 10 inch buckets, growing in the soil that's still in these 10 inch buckets. I've had it out and broken it up and popped it straight back in. I've left a space above that soil in each of these buckets because under normal circumstances I would put these buckets on a rack of my smallest compost pile in the world and top them off with a layer of chop and drop that usually comprises seaweed leaves and probably grass. Um, and then they would sit for the next five or six months because I wouldn't be growing any, anything in them over winter and in the spring of next year these buckets, this soil would be ready to go again. We've managed the soil, we've maintained the soil over those months and that soil will be ready to go again. Uh, but I've got another use for this soil this year. It's going on a quick turnaround. It's going on a quick turnaround to facilitate these strawberry plants uh, that I've got growing in those yoghurt pots. Okay. A week ago shot a video, I'm going to put a clip of that on now, where I took the strawberry plants out of these yoghurt pots to inspect the root ball. Um, because what I don't want to do is take the plant out and all the soil falls away from the roots. I need those roots to get all of that soil, produce a good root ball. And a week ago we didn't have a good root ball. We had some flowers I took your advice and I snipped those flowers off. I'm just waiting for this root ball to get a bit more substantial so that it will hold that soil together so that when I take the plant out of this yoghurt pot to go into these water buckets, the root ball just will hold the soil. The soil won't just fall away from it. So I think these, these plants need another week or so in these yoghurt pots before we pot them on. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to reinvigorate this soil with some blood fish and bone and prepare it to take these um, strawberry plants in a week or so's time perhaps and that will definitely be on the back end of this video when I put these guys up we'll have a look at them because there is actually something about these plants that puzzles me it puzzles me and I think it might puzzle you although I may be I may be seeing things here um, but I'm going to let you have a look at the back end of this video 
and tell me what you think. Okay, let's uh, move the strawberry plants to one side. Let's bring the barra into shot and let's start reinvigorating this soil with uh, a balanced fertilizer, blood fish and bone. This is one of our buckets of soil. Right. This is the uh, blood fish and bone in this recycled plastic sweet jar, like our recycling at homegrown veg. And that's the blood fish and bone. And you're going to say to me, how much is that? What, what's the quantity? Well, I think it's just enough that by the time I get to fill in the last bucket, I'll have probably used what I've got. Okay, let's mix this. And of course, the other thing you can do during the growing year is that if the strawberries are looking a bit peaky, well, we can always add some liquid fertiliser, can't we? We can give them something, surely. Okay, let's charge that bucket. I'll just show you this before I go any further. Yogurt pot filled with soil. trying to do here, we're trying to produce a planting hole in the middle of this bucket that'll be the right size for the strawberry plants when we come to move them into the buckets. Okay, that'll make life a lot easier for us and hopefully uh, no root disturbance. Right, watch this. That now is about level with the top and that's where we want our strawberry plant to finish up. I will just bury this. Hey, don't let me forget I put one in here, I've done that before. <laughs> I've, had, I've had subscribers uh, sending me comments saying, hey, you've buried a yoghurt pot, did you take it out? I've done that before. Right. We'll shake that off. Push this down a little. Just a little more in there. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to leave that in there until we're ready for moving the strawberries up and that comes out. Let me see if I can take it out now just to show you what we're trying to achieve here. Give it a twist so it isn't sticking. <laughs> How good's that? Can you see that plant in all? I don't know if you can. How good's that? So you can imagine the strawberry plant now. Boink, get in there. Get in there, Morton. Just as soon as those strawberries are ready to pot up, we'll move them up into these buckets. I've had a look at the uh, root balls on these strawberries. And they look as though they're holding the soil well together now. They're holding the root ball together. Um, so now's the time uh, 
to move them up from these yogurt pots into these water buckets uh, and for that we're going to need a little bit of fertiliser, blood fish and bone. I'm going to sprinkle some of that in the hole and also I've found some old weed membrane um, that I've cut into these discs. I'll show you that. I've cut into these discs and I'm going to place that on top. That's going to keep the strawberries off the soil. I'm expecting the strawberries to fall over the sides of the bucket and so they wouldn't come in contact with the soil but if they do we're going to use this stuff. Now I know it's more traditional to use straw but I haven't got any straw. <laughs> All I've got is some weed membrane so that's what we're using. We're going to use what we've got. Uh, we like to recycle stuff here at homegrown veg. I think this weed membrane has been down in the garden somewhere. It's done a job for me already and now it's going to do another job for me. Uh, so let's take this last strawberry into the greenhouse to join its mates. Um, yeah, and we'll pot them up. Come on, let's go.
Okay, that was then. This is now. This is what they look like in spring. I think you'll agree that they look quite a sturdy, healthy strawberry plant. Um, and if you take a closer look, I think we might actually have two from one. I won't touch them this year, but at the back end I'll probably split these two. Two from one. And this one's done the same. If I turn it round, which way? Turn it round this way. You might be able to see that look. Two from one. Hey! <laughs> so these strawberry plants are breeding without any help from me, I might add. All I've done is uh, stood them out over winter in these 10 inch water buckets. Uh, and I'm sure you'll agree they do look healthy. But hey, before we end this video, there's one last thing I must show you. One last thing. Just let me take this one off the table and put another one on. Just hold on. Well, look at this. This is one of those three survivors that came with the first batch. This is one of the ten that came with the second batch. I've actually marked these plants. I've just put a white pebble on the uh, on the bucket so that I know which of the three that survived the first delivery being run through my letterbox. Come on, that's a different variety. That's a different variety, is it not? I mean, look at the look at the colour of these leaves. This one is much darker than this one. I think I've now got uh, two varieties of strawberries. When I only try to purchase one variety, that's got to be a win, hasn't it? And they all seem to want to split off into more than one plant. I mean, look at this. Let me see if I can show you this. Can you see that? This guy's splitting off. Already. I'm going to have more strawberry plants than you can shake a stick at. I'm not complaining. I'm really, what I really would like is that they fruit at different times of the year. Wouldn't that be good? If we've got some that say fruited mid-spring and some that fruited mid-summer. Yeah, that would be a win. That would definitely be a win. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm hoping that the next time I show you these guys, they've got flowers on, maybe even fruit. Okay, so this is homegrown veg, signing out.